Well, folks, I'm excited today to give you the real deal on the real steel H5 Gerfalcon. Hey, folks, welcome to this episode. Really pumped to be able to show you, for me, the, my very first jump into this company. I've never reviewed a, a product from Real Steel before, and uh, I went over on Amazon, spent about $47 for this H5 Gerfalcon, and we will have links in the description below over to Amazon. So at the end of this video, if you see value in this pocket knife or want to check out other uh, Real Steel pocket knives, knives and their their tools that they offer using those hyperlinks helps me get out there buy products just like what you're about to see in this video and give you guys full comprehensive videos bringing you new stuff to the market and showing you new stuff that to the market to help you guys get the best bang for your buck and items that are going to make your life just that much more enjoyable so what i'm excited about is that for under 50 bucks we're getting a really good steal we're getting a lot of great features that from a lot of companies they'd be charging you 60 70 80 dollars for but that we're getting at a budget price with the real steel products. So let's go ahead, dive into what this knife has to offer, pros and cons, and see if it's the right EDC pocket knife for you. All right, business end, the blade. Let's go ahead and talk about this sucker. Not only is this very um, aesthetically pleasing, you know, you just look at it, it's got a pretty wide blade profile, which I really like a lot. We're basically looking at a full flat grind uh, with a clip on the top. It's got this nice swedge that goes all the way. It's not super thin and sharp, um, but uh, really tapers down nicely to a good precise tip. You're looking at a maximum thickness back here of 0 0.12, so an eighth of an inch, and then uh, tapering down obviously really quick. Now we're looking at from the handle scale to the tip about 3.4 inches, and then an actual cutting edge of three and a quarter inches. Very mild recurve, massive belly, good tip. So, I mean, if there was like a little chip or something right there, that might be a little tricky to get, but it starts going to a normal belly almost right away. So you're just getting a little bit of recurve right there, but tuning up with ceramic rods and, you know, I mean, you could even use a coffee mug, easily done. Now this is a big part for me, the 14C28N Sandvik Steel. This knife, as we discussed a moment ago, being at under 50 bucks with all of the functionality, capability, and just fit and finish that we're seeing in this knife with that type of steel is fantastic. And really for me, it's, it's kind of a, a calling out of other knife companies. Uh, for me and what I see on the market. You know, so many knife companies and big ones, you know, we're talking CRKT, Kershaw, Cold Steel. You know, um, to get a knife under $50, you're either gonna get 8CR or you're gonna get um, maybe 4116 steel or you're getting OS 8 if you're lucky. Um, otherwise, you know, you're that's what you're gonna get. Otherwise, you're gonna be paying more than $50 for almost every knife on the market, particularly from the big well-known companies, the US-owned companies. This being a Chinese company and using that steel, which is a really good steel. It's definitely a leg up over all those that I just listed to you. It's um, rather rust resistant, easy to resharpen, but it's going to hold a much better edge than OS 8, than your 8CRs. Um, and it's it's just a really, really good steel. I've had a lot of use with it over the years, and I, I love it. It's a fantastic steel. Um, I And at that price point, is fantastic. And really, I hope that this starts to push some of those other companies I just, I just listed to upgrade their steel. I'm tired of the OS 8s and the 420 high carbon and the, the 8CRs that are out there. Uh, they just don't hold their edge long enough for me. And this is to me kind of like the new standard in my mind of like the minimum is our Sandvik steels uh, are really what I want to see in the minimum for a good knife that's going to be actually worth throwing down money for. Now that doesn't mean we won't be reviewing 8CRs and OS 8 steel you know, knives in the future because uh, there's still that place. But man, you can get so much uh, for under $50 with this knife and many other knife companies out there right now giving you great fish, fit and finish, great capability, and giving you a good steel better with edge retention and resharpening capability than the old, you know, old guard of steels that I just listed of the OS 8s and the, the 8CRs that, are, that have been out there for so long. So I really hope that this knife and knives like this really begin to push the envelope for these US companies to start doing that. And if they need to you know, charge us another $5 for each of their designs, great, but we'll get better performance overall. And so that is my little rant and my little soapbox right there. And I gotta say, I love the capability as, I've, as you've seen, I've been rolling it in. This is a ridiculous slicer of every material I threw at it. So a fantastic, EDC blade uh, and its shape as well as the steel that they decided to go with at that price point of under 50 bucks. So on the handle here, what we're looking at is stainless steel on one side with a frame lock 
and then we are looking at G10 on the other. Now they got a couple different color combinations, mostly tan and black is what you're gonna find over on Amazon. I have seen a couple reviews out there with like a blue. So, I mean, they may be doing some extra, you know, different stuff down the line, or maybe they do sprint runs, I'm not quite sure. But I decided to go with the tan on this model. Great G10 texturing on this side, it feels really good. Uh, it's not overly aggressive, you know, and it's uh, G10 scale on one side and then that stainless steel on the other. So you're gonna get that traction, but you're also getting that durability. This is gonna come in at four ounces even. So for the size of knife and the, fr you know, solid frame lock on one side, uh, really nice, good flow through construction with those pillars there. Really like that aspect a lot. Overall length from front to back is gonna be four and a half inches long. So really dig that aspect. And it's gonna be uh, 0.4 on the overall thickness right there. Good jimping that's not aggressive at all, but it's gonna really lock you in. That finger flipper is gonna give you that massive cut in guard there. So you are totally locked into place. I got large size hands. I wear large size gloves, if you guys all know. Plenty of room to spare out the back there. Just feels very comfortable, no hot spots really fills out my hand well. Nice tubed lanyard hole right there. A Little bit of jimping, but again, very blocky, doesn't bite in, you know, when you're bearing down on the knife at all, even in that reverse grip. I mean, you are locked into place. So totally dig in the ergonomics, fantastic and fits really well. And coming in for being a frame lock with a frame, you know, solid side, uh, really at really lightweight compared to a lot of other knives out there. A lot of them are gonna be, you know, four and a half to five ounces. So nice to see that lightweight feature as well. So we'll hit deployment and lockup. Now, I love the fact that there are some bronze bushings in here that are super smooth. Really nice stop bar right there as well. We got a really good flipper that's not sharp, but easy to engage. So you can either flip it out that way with just a little flick of the wrist, very smooth washers in there, or very functional thumb studs. Really like the thumb studs and it's super cool. Just the aesthetics that they're doing with this knife. Uh, they did a little bit of G10 underneath the stud and screwed those in just to give that kind of colored flare. I really like that a lot. Protrudes actually slightly, just like a millimeter above the handle scales on either side. So super easy for you to engage and flip open that way as well. So I love that they give you that double functionality there. Really dig that a lot. So the deployment, super smooth, really nice finger flipper or thumb studs, which I totally dig. As we look to the lockup and detent here, we got that frame lock, as I've said. And again, that G10 um, uh, over travel bar, keeping the, the lock from over traveling. Again, and just a cool little feature that they did all these little G10 highlights there. Really like that a lot but great lockup, super solid, no wobble or play. You can see there it just hits about 80% of the back of the spine there. Really dig that a lot. Good um, cut-ins there so that I can easily use my thumb, disengage, close it, no problem. So the lockup, super solid, very happy with the lockup that they decided to go with. Now, my only kind of critique is that the detent is a little weak. Now, there's a nice detent ball in there. You can feel it and it clicks it into place, but I can flick my the the knife upside down, you know, and get the blade to come out. It's not quite as tight as I would would have liked. That's my only critique with this knife is just a little bit of a stronger detent would have been nice. It's not a deal killer for me at all. And it's pretty on par with, you know, a lot of them out there. You can just kind of see it there. It sucked it back in. But the ball bearing just doesn't hold it quite as tight as I would like. And again, I can whip it open like that. So that's just something to consider. But great centering, perfect dead center. Been rocking this plane with this, opening it hundreds of times, no floating left or right. So they did a great job overall with just a little bit of critiquing with a tighter detent would have been nice to see. So pocket clip, stainless steel. So it, you will see it in your pocket, but it's a loop over deep ride pocket clip. Totally love that. Tip up, tip down, righties only. Sorry, lefties, nothing there for you to screw into. Um, you know, with the G10 on one side, there's not a lot they can do to help mount that they would have had to do something a lot different um, you know it would have been nice to have that feature but they don't um, so it is a righty only design and just perfect I, I like the loop over fits in perfect in all my pockets and it's got just a hair sticking up to make it a little easier for you to grab so this was perfectly designed for righties with that loop over tip up tip down uh, design and I totally dig the pocket clip for me being a righty so again, I just really want to hit home the whole uh, value of the steel and the higher quality steel. Now I have the steel wheel cut jack up here. This is a D2 steel blade coming in at under $40. 
uh, really, really nice. I, and again, I feel like it's very similar to the Gerfalcon here uh, from Real Steel. Just that it's giving us uh, these two knives up here such great value with good quality steel. I really think back to kind of um, the the car market in America in the late 70s as Japanese car makers, Honda and Toyota, um, began to send over vehicles like the uh, Toyota Camry and the Honda Accord and the um, the Helix uh, style of pickups, you know, that, that started to take place. And they presented such a level of quality and performance at good budget prices that people began to flock to those designs and those, those car manufacturers. And it forced the U.S. car manufacturers to really step up their game in fuel economy and in quality control. And just in, in it, the capitalism and the free market economy really pushed car makers to make their cars better because of the influx of the Japanese vehicles. And so that's what I really hope that these knives and knives like these start to do for the rest of the market. You know, I'm looking here at the Kershaw Blur. This is an S30V version, but the Sandvik version with the exact same steel is going to be about 55 bucks. And I would put this real steel on par with quality, fit and finish, and capability with any Kershaw Blur that I've ever owned. Uh, we look here, you know, the CRKT uh, Crossbones. Great design, really cool. Aus 8 steel, though, the Sandvik over here is going to be much better quality. Uh, and this is like a $55 knife, you know, and again, 47 this one's 40 with d2 um, you know we're looking at a 55 dollar mini trident with aus 8 we're looking at a, a 40 dollar con with aus 8 you know so um these steels down here uh are kind of lower quality than what we're seeing on the real steel lower quality than what we see on the steel wheel and i really hope that um, these companies begin to push the envelope of their foreign produced um, blades, you know, blades that they're making over in China, in Taiwan, and begin to just upgrade the steels so that we can still get great budget value, but get more performance, longer edge retention, easier, you know, tuning up with Sandvix and D2s and those type of things would be fantastic to see down the line. And I really do hope that the real steel and the steel wheel and knives like them are like those Toyota Camrys and Civics and pickup trucks and stuff from the 70s that really pushed the whole market and gave everybody better vehicles down the line through all all manufacturers that they really do that for the knife community and really begin to push these makers to to give us great designs like they always do but with better quality steels than what we've been seeing with the 8 crs and the os 8s and 420 high carbons well i think hugh jackman and his robot boxer would back me up on this one i really am digging this Gerfalcon, folks, from Real Steel. And it, it will not be the last Real Steel product that I purchase because I'm seeing great bang for buck and just great performance uh, in what this is. It's not just like it's a great deal, but you know, you got to cut corners and you got to just kind of you know, deal with some either garbage steel or some lower, you know, quality fit and finish from everything I'm seeing for the under $50 price point, guys, we're getting an awesome pocket knife. And I can't wait to see what else Real Steel's got out there and get some more videos done for you from this company that I believe is really pushing the envelope. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope this video has shown you what the Gerfalcon can do and whether or not it's the right EDC knife for you. As always, check us out on all the relevant social media. That's a great way to see what's up and coming, projects we're working on, as well as a different way to communicate with me if you want to get a quick question answered that maybe isn't relevant to the video that you see in front of you. Um, always remember, please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. That always helps get the word out and helps us continue to do what we do here. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.